people, welcome back to another pre-recorded podcast of the Arsenio Buck Show. Guys, just giving you basically a preclude of what's about to come. I'm very, very excited about, of course, the Gary Gary V coming out. Well, the Gary V book that's coming out tomorrow. And man, oh man, so check this out, man. When was it? When was it? When was it? Today is what? Today is Sunday, Saturday. Okay, so I'm guessing it was Friday. Yep, that's it, Friday. I was actually... At a bar right outside one of the BTS stations, of course, in the middle of the CBD out here in Thailand, and I was waiting on a friend. So here I am, you know, sipping on a little bit of Jim Beam, as I never do, um, and I'm just going at it right now. I like, like, the thoughts are going, the ideas are going, I'm literally throwing all these things down on my MacBook, and people are looking at me crazy, because as I'm typing, it's like I'm thinking ahead of what I'm typing about, and people are looking at me like, how is he just drifting off into space, looking at the ceiling while typing, it was just, boy, I was in the moment, and I know a lot of you have witnessed that with your own self, so I was actually writing about technology. And there is a big discrepancy, obviously, in between the generational, you know, the generations right now with the big generation gap. Baby boomers and Gen X are very, very upset with the entire ordeal about, you know, Facebook and this and Facebook Live and YouTube and all this. And they're like, oh, well, no one ever communicates anymore. So is technology really, really that bad? Or is it just older generations feeding us those negative suggestions? And, you know, just a two, just about two weeks ago, I was looking up, I don't know, for some reason, uh, this came up on something. And I was reading about uh, last year being the safest year ever in aviation history. 52 deaths. No commercial jet liners went down last year. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, like, holy God, that means, yeah, that fear of flying? You know, that one out of probably every, what, two million that go down probably went up exponentially. Like, I mean, if you even think about it right now, the last four weeks, no major jetliners have gone down. Why is that? But, you know, if we go pinpoint in back to, you know, the decades of the past and see, you know, just, you know, have a chat and look at some of the statistics of like, you know, about four decades ago, the 1970s and the 1980s had the worst Well, we're basically the worst decades ever, with over 120,000 deaths per decade. Pretty shocking, huh? So I asked my students at that time. I'm like, man, guys, you guys really need to look at these statistics. And I said, because, of course, it's a conversation class, I said, what's your opinion? He said, man, technology. I said, what do you mean by technology? He said, air traffic control. They're able to maneuver and have planes do this and do that. I mean, if we even go back. To probably the past few years with the Malaysia Airlines flight. Rest in peace to everyone that was on that flight. And the Air Asia flight. And a couple other flights. Those flights went down. One, I believe it was a suicide mission. Malaysia Airlines 370. And Air Asia went down because apparently just completely pilot error. As a lot of the Air France flights went down. And basically, these airplanes literally fly right out of the, they fly right out of the sky. So if you actually look at it, it's not even really technologically based. It's because of human error. It's pilot error. But luckily, there have been nothing, there has been nothing the past 13 months. Okay, yeah, there were a couple of crashes, but those were with the small planes. And they were very weird and odd because like the last 25 deaths that came at the end of the year were from two doctor, uh, there, there were families with doctors in them. I'm to, I'm telling you, I just don't understand it. But if we actually just pinpoint and understand that back in the 1970s and back in the 1980s, those were dangerous times. The Japanese Airlines flight, even those two airlines, I think I, man, I bit the hell out of my lip. Anyways, those two airlines that crashed, you know, ran into each other on the runway. Again, air traffic control had no idea what the hell they were doing. So, guys, I mean, we, we can look at the 747-400s that have, like, a horrific crash safety, uh, of course, you know, safety record and whatnot. Um, if we could keep going forward and whatnot, if we even go back to the 1970s, that's what we could communicate, right? Yeah, the failure to communicate. I'm sorry, what was back in the 1970s? Oh, of course, Muhammad Ali couldn't even eat food because he was African-American. He couldn't even walk into a restaurant and eat As an African-American in Louisville, Kentucky, because he was African-American. The I Have a Dream speech was just about four years prior to that. 
uh, probably just around the same time when he denied that invitation to go to Vietnam. He said, absolutely not. I am not going to Vietnam. So what, to kill brown people and you won't even let me use my own toilet? The miscommunication back in the 60s and 70s? First and foremost, you Gen B have nothing to back up whatsoever because you have come from one of the worst generations in mankind. There it is. There it is. And yet technology is just so bad right now, isn't it? I mean, if we look at the 1975, just shortly after, you know, United States withdrew from Vietnam. That's when Pol Pot came down from the foothills, went into the epicenter of Phnom Penh, and unleashed one of the worst genocides in humankind against his own people. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the same time that cocaine started running rampant in the African-American neighborhoods. Kind of like 10 years later, you know, in terms of the HIV coming from wherever it came from and blah, 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 blah. We could go on and on and on. I'm just saying. Technology. Because when you actually had HIV back in the 1980s, you would die within weeks. Like the famous raptors, you know, Easy e and all the other people who died from HIV and whatnot. But now, either the body's immune system has become almost damn near immune to it. We still don't even know what it is. I'm not even going to get into that. But I'm just saying now that we have the technology, people can live with HIV forever. Because all HIV is, is whatever it is, it goes in and kills those immune systems. And now you're susceptible to everything. Technology. Now, if you're going to say technology and Facebook and all this is just so bad, I don't know what it is. Social media. Oh, my God. You know, there's a guy. There's a guy talking with Gary Vee at one point. And as he was talking to Gary Vee, he was like, oh, my God. No, bullying actually goes home now. It goes home because the children, they're not able to escape it because they have social media. And it's like, really? At that same time, what about Atari? I mean, even if we go back further to, you know, the car. People thought the car was crazy. People thought the kaleidoscope was crazy. Going to the moon? Insane. I'm surprised we even went to the moon, you know, given the fact that we America was just killing everyone at the time. Just, just, I mean, I'm just speaking from an American standpoint. But I think the lack of communication is why the world was at such unrest that last century, the 20th century. I mean, if we even move forward and go to back to the technology, the SNES, the Sega Genesis, and then this, and then that, man, Mike Tyson's super punch-out was supposed to ruin Gary V's life. Yeah, it was supposed to ruin it. I mean, I still remember in 1995 and 1996, and next thing you know, Sega Saturn came, and my friend, uh, Joseph Rico, and his, uh, of course, his brother, Alex Rico, they had the, uh, what is it? They had the Sega Saturn. See, we were still playing outside as kids and whatnot, but we would still go in and say, hey, I still want to play video games. A lot of people, including Lewis Hoes, no offense to Lewis Hoes and whatnot, they post those pictures and say, oh, I remember I used to go outside and play in the mud and do this and do that, and now everyone's just on the telephone. I understand that, I understand that, but this is a new age. They're going, we, you know what, the people right now who were born in, let's say, the 80s, such as me, or the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, and especially if we go further, much, much more down that path, a lot of people are angry about technology. But the thing is, what about the people before your time? What about when you were in the 1970s? Didn't those in the 1920s think you were batshit crazy for jumping in mud? Hey, just asking a question. I mean, if you look at the social media platforms such as Zanga that started uh, that hit Korea probably, what, around 2003, 2004, people were able to voice their opinion. I remember reading this one girl's profile on Zanga uh, 14 years ago. She was depressed. She was talking about suicide. I didn't have a Zanga account, nor did I actually even care about helping this girl. But I would read and she would just voice out all that pain that was inside of her onto this blog. They could just go on there and say, yeah, Zanga's actually, and my, one of my close friends, Mark, he would say, yeah, Zanga's just a place where we could just go on there and talk about our life. And I'm like, why would you go on a social media and talk about your life? Funny how that went by, huh? Hey, MySpace came. We started putting pictures on there. You can have a top friends list. Anytime you went from, you know, you demoted someone from one to three or three to five and five to eight or whatever, somebody would get very, very mad, wouldn't they? Facebook, all this is, I mean, yes, I'm, I am, uh, I wouldn't say I'm an advocate, but I'm an antagonist for Facebook Live in uh, particular countries. I don't believe Facebook Live should be in Africa, India, Bang uh, Bangladesh. I don't think it should be in 
uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, some of the countries that they abuse the privilege of that because there are beatings on there. There are a lot of different things, but you can't just hold one person or a group of people entirely, you know, re- you know, accountable for everything that's happening. But Facebook Live, I know, I understand, it's crazy, but guys, just think about it. Remember when you had to send a piece of mail from one side of the planet all the way to the other side of the planet? Do you know how long that would take? Remember when the women were on their typewriters and they were typing all these letters saying, I'm so sorry, but your son has passed. He died at war. Do you know how long that took for that letter? Can you imagine a mother on this day, January 28th, her son died today at war. She wouldn't find out for about two months. Oh, your son died two months ago. Can you imagine that? That was communication back then. I believe that because the lack of technology and the lack of communication, this is probably why the war was at. The world was at war. I mean, if you look at the what's going on right now in terms of our technological uh, advances, I'm talking about like the in-flight entertainment systems that are in these 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 beautiful planes, uh, these massive A380s that are inhabiting the sky, and we're able to send messages and get on FaceTime and talk with another human being on the other side of the world. Air traffic control could like at at Jackson, what is it, Harford Jackson? I think that's the airport name in Atlanta, Georgia. They're able. <clears throat> Busiest airport in the world. They're able to maneuver all the planes around so they can arrive and take off carefully and safely. But before that, mm -mm 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 -mm. see, it's kind of like the people who are complaining about Bitcoin right now, you know? Bitcoin, a lot of people saying, oh, well, Bitcoin is actually really, really bad. And, oh, you should be very, very careful with that, just as we should have been very, very careful with uh, MySpace and uh, Zanga. And when Facebook first came out and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. And online dating and going back with the PlayStation, the Super NES and all those things that came about in terms of the technological world. It said, be careful. Playing too many games is going to hurt your eyes. You're going to lose your eyesight, my mom would say. Mm hmm. See, it's just we complete. It's kind of like when I was telling you guys about the ideas. Right. And if you bring a new idea to the table, nine times out of ten, whoever it is, they're just going to completely deny it. I mean, this happens at my place of work right now. Uh, I told you guys so many times about me developing this curriculum, and now that this new coordinator is around, he's like, oh, I just don't think it's going to work. And you know what? I've already said a year and a half from this, I'm talking about next year, around probably between May and July, that language center is going to shut down. All of them, all the branches are finished. Why? Because they're not adapting to the world just as a lot of human beings are just not adapting to the fact that hey technology is here to stay period and so what is this basically what is this podcast all about and whatnot i mean we're gonna have to embrace the change i mean for those of you who do not want to adapt and say oh well no one listens to podcasts well no one uh, no one watches youtube well no one uses facebook all my clients aren't on facebook All of this continues to happen because human beings are just in denial about the entire thing. How about the plastic island that's floating around out there? How about all the plastic that's being just literally dumped into our into our water habitats around the world? And of course, even elephants are eating plastic somewhere up there in Chiang Mai, north of Thailand. All these things polluting our quarter, the greenhouse emissions, all of this. We need to take responsibility and say, listen, we got this technology now. We believe it's bad, but how we could probably use it. To stop the nonsense that's happening around the planet. Guys, there have been no wars. Yes, we got bombs going off in the Middle East. But, of course, I'm not going to get into that. But there's a lot behind that. Um, Because that never went off before September 11th. Just telling you guys. You never heard about bombs going off in the Middle East ever. Their own people killing their own people. And never, ever, ever, ever before September 11th. So I believe that a lot of things are created by media. And so, of course, it's those people who are profiting who are saying, oh, actually, it's bad, but you're actually profiting big time from all of it. You're the one putting out the the, the ridiculous news like the tsunami warning that just happened a few, what, probably about almost a week ago. That tsunami warning happened. I'm like, OK, so where's the tsunami? Tsunami never came. See, the amount of fear that you inject into people through using social media is despicable. Now, you can use it in a good way. Or a bad way. But just know that this technology is only going to advance even more. If you think it's crazy right now, in 10 years, 
We're not even going to have to carry passports anymore. Everything's going to be biometric, fingerprinted, eyes, retina, everything that you see that's happening out here. <laughs> you think that iPhone 8, that iPhone 10 is amazing? Just imagine a chip that you could put anywhere at any time that doesn't need to be charged. And you could call someone up. Can you imagine just literally just sitting here and saying, ooh, I'm going to call uh, Andre in New York. Andre in New York. And the next thing you know, he pops up within two seconds. All free. If you think it's crazy now, it's going to get even crazier. And if you don't adapt and just say, you know what, it's here to stay. You're just going to live a very long life of just misery and just, you know, seemingly complain about something that you have no control over. Get to it. And with that being said, people, random, Ramble of Positivity is coming on later on tonight. And we got Gary V's book. We got Gary V coming up on Tuesday, Wednesday, Darren Hardy, Thursday, Friday, Napoleon Hill, Saturday. And I'm going to just give it one day a week for Lewis Ho's book because I'm kind of just like, man, it's not much going on anymore in that book. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. As always, this is your host, Arsenio. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. Over and out. <laughs>